Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some people call me the space cowboy. Some call me the gangster of love. Some people call me Maurice, because I speak of the pompatus of love. I speak of the pompatus of love. That uh, song sung by Steve Miller in the uh, 1970s, one of my favorites, The Joker, I began to think this week, what does that even mean, the pompatus of love? Pompatus, you see, is a nonce word. It's a word that sounds like a word, but isn't actually a word. It is completely made up despite the clarity for which it speaks. It's a word that describes the ostentatious nature of love, its display and its flamboyance. Now, despite the earthiness of the rest of the lyrics of this particular song, or, well, most of Steve Miller's songs, Space Cowboy and the Gangster of Love, as other examples, the word pompatous, I think, is an apt description of the love that Jesus speaks about. It's a love greater than the powers of this world. It's a love greater than the games that you and I play in our relationships, greater than the way that we even hurt one another. It is a love that Jesus speaks of that is greater than all laws of this world, state and church. This is what it makes, this is what makes Jesus such an outlaw in his own time, and a true gangster of love in ours. Jesus speaks of the pompous of love that is greater than any and all social mechanics and a love that is meant for all people. And so we pray today, send out people. There is good news of salvation and resurrection. Send them out to all people. Tell them, I would suggest, of the pompous of love, the outlandish nature of God's love. Send them out. You go out. I'll go out. Let us go out. The world is hungry to hear some good news. Only the pompous of love will cause God to be born a man, a human being. To come and be with us. It sounds outlandish, except in our scriptures we know that this is God's nature. From the very beginning in the Garden of Eden, God comes and walks with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. God sends Abraham and Sarah out and says, I want to go walking with you. God brings the people out of Israel to be God's people. God sends the fishermen in our gospel lesson to go out and take this good news of God's love for us, which is unexplainable if you know any humans. But God loves us still and wants to be with us. Only the pompous of love would see a man love in such a way that he would die not just for his friends and his family upon the cross, but die for all people, even those he had not met. It is the pompous of love that suggests 
that we, you and I, are inheritors, as Paul says, of being a part of God's family. That all people are welcomed into God's family by virtue of Jesus Christ. All of you. It is this kind of pompous of love that, that suggests that no matter how far we may wander from God, God is right there waiting to embrace us when we turn around. As if we hadn't traveled but a foot. This is the love that God has for us. No matter how bad it gets or how good it gets, God is present and there with us. Even when we fail to live up to our own expectations. And yet, Jesus calls us. The gospel story is not just about a story from long ago. We read it to remind us this is our work. It is our work in our lives to live such a life, to say such things, to act in such a way that people, when they look upon us, they say, I don't understand that love, but that love is from God. <laughs> That's amazing. It is not just God's work, but we have been made to engage in the work with Jesus himself. And not only that, but God wants us to be with God after we die. The good news of salvation. Not just about how we live in this world, but about being with God in our future. Despite all that we claim in this world, death does not have the last word, but instead a love that we cannot truly explain will call us forward from the grave and has defeated death once and for all that we may live forever with God. That's what we proclaim. And not just when I'm here on Sunday. You proclaim it every Sunday in the words of the Nicene Creed. We expect the resurrection. We expect the resurrection. We expect that God's love is so powerful that there will, as Paul says, be nothing in the book of Romans that can separate us from the love of God. No powers, no principalities. No force in the world will be able to stand against this God who loves us so much. We may fail from time to time to put words around this. But on any given Sunday in this church, we try our very best. And I would encourage you in the other six days, in 23 hours, to live this life. It doesn't promise, as that hymn said, that it's going to be easy, does it? It doesn't say, oh, yeah, you know, you're going to love God and God loves you and it's all going to be nice and easy now. You all, uh, everybody just going to be so amazed. Oh, my gosh, how much Gerald loves me. He just loves me so much and there's just never, we're never going to have any problems. Isn't that right? We're just all good. We're all good all the time, all the time. Now, we're coming off of holidays, so I know you know that's not true. <laughs> right? We just spent some time with people that we love more than anything, and we couldn't wait to get out of that, off that table so we can go to the other room and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> right? God doesn't promise it's easy. But he does promise that he's going to be with us. He does promise that that love will conquer in the end all things, even our failings. These aren't just words that we say here. These are ways of memorizing so that we can remind ourselves at that moment when it's really bad, when it's really hard, when you lose a loved one, 
who you've loved forever, when you find a loved one, when a child is born, all of those moments to remind ourselves of God's amazing love. I encourage you not just to believe in the pompatus of love and the wild promises of our gangster God who undoes, undoes all the laws of this world, but I encourage you to live them, to live them and to walk it, to be God's image in the world to all whom you meet. And when you fail, to return to the Lord so that you will see that God is there and present with you and ready to embrace you, even though you fail. And then God is going to turn you around and send you back out. And that is good news indeed. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.